Hello, I'm Bill Henry. I am a practicing mechanical engineering consultant located in San Jose, California, also sometimes referred to as Silicon Valley. Here we have a number of microelectronic factories, data centers, and other large facilities that require year-around cooling. Typically, this is provided by large water-cooled chiller plants. This video will demonstrate how to optimize chiller plants for the best overall efficiency. When the video is finished, you will have a better understanding of how the chiller plant is optimized, the proven strategies that are used, and how they are applied. Now, it would be great if this demonstration used an actual chiller plant, but my clients have better use for their facilities, and it would take many hours over an extended period to set up various scenarios with comparative results. So the next best thing is a simulator that emulates a chiller plant. But a little explanation is in order. A chiller plant has two primary functions. First is the production of chilled water, and second is the distribution of that chilled water. But most of the power, say 90-95%, goes into production. And for that reason, we will concentrate on that function. Now, behind me is a test bed. It can be configured to match different chiller plant designs. For instance, multiple chillers, pumps, and cooling towers that may be matched or mismatched. The first panel on your left is the simulator that emulates the chillers, pumps, and cooling towers working together as a system to provide the needed refrigeration. The middle panel is for displays and a place to input typical variables such as the load from the facility and outside weather conditions. The load can be adjusted on the fly. Just as in real time, except that we can speed it up quite a bit as a matter of fact, a big advantage using a simulator. In the same way, the wet bulb temperature can be adjusted with this dial. The cooling tower is sensitive to the outdoor wet bulb and affects what can be done to optimize the system. There are also options to select various combinations of equipment, such as which chillers and cooling towers are online. It is possible, for instance, to operate with one chiller and two cooling towers. The displays are located on this panel as well, but I'll get back to them in a minute. The third panel is a controller used to implement the optimizing strategies. In this case, it is the chiller plant optimizer. It accepts input from the simulator, like the leaving and entering condensed water temperatures and the flow rate. The controller provides outputs to the cooling towers to control the cold water temperature to a desired set point, and it includes an option to vary condenser water flow rate. This test bed is currently programmed to simulate and control up to three 1,000 ton chillers. To keep things simple, I'm going to simulate one chiller with a matching cooling tower and pump. Now, back to the displays. On the top is a Seymour Micro 6 inch LCD monochrome display. It's a touch screen with function buttons. And here I'm using it to display information from the simulator. This display on the bottom is a Seymour 6 inch grayscale display with 15 shades of gray and a 320 by 240 pixel QVGA screen resolution. It has an Ethernet connection and can be accessed with a computer browser. And here, I'm using it for the chiller plant optimizer. I know these displays are washed out in this video. So the next step will continue with computer screen captures using an 8 inch Seymour color display to compare various scenarios. Here we are at the computer. And again, this is the test bed. And the simulator 
is an important tool for the development and design of the Chilipan Optimizer software. It is also used to customize and match specific plant configuration and now it's used for this demonstration. You know, I think there may be as many different plant configurations as there are Chilla plant design engineers. And in addition, there can be issues that may arise during any installation. And so it's typically less time consuming and less costly to make adjustments in the office instead of tweaking in the field. Here are pictures of the display screens which were washed out in the previous segment. The monochrome screen on the left is used with the simulator. The grayscale screen on the right has better graphics and can be accessed with a computer browser, just as we will now access the color display. With an Ethernet connection and an IP address assigned to the display, you can use your browser and download a screen console to your computer. Then once you have that installed, you can click on the icon. It will bring up uh, and we can provide a username and a password. User1 and a password uh, here. And it will bring up the display just as uh, it is in real time. This is the uh, first screen of the display and it gives an immediate picture of the chiller plant operation. It tells us that the chiller is operating about 0.31 kW per ton and the total plant is operating around 0.54 kW per ton. The condensed water set point mode is in auto and the outputs are all enabled. Now this disable function will allow us to easily switch to another control or manual control if that's needed to support a maintenance issue. The plant load for this scenario is set at 60 percent or 600 tons and the wet bulb temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We would also uh, like to see how the optimizing strategies are working. And this screen captures the information to let us know. We are over this period of time we have used 61,000 kilowatt hours. The baseline power usage without optimization would have been 79,000 kilowatt hours and thus we have a savings of 18,200 kilowatt hours. And we can reset this all back to zero. So let's just take a quick look at what this represents. So we have uh, uh, an accumulate over about 305 hours. You've, we've accumulated these the savings of 18,200 kilowatt hours, and we can translate that into a daily savings of uh, over 1,400 kilowatt hours. A daily dollar savings at 11 cents per kilowatt hour would be 157 dollars. So we can look at that in terms of 30-day savings, uh, 66 months, one year. And I'm thinking here of a small semiconductor operation that operates 724 year around. So we can see we have a, a fair amount of opportunity for some significant savings.